So differential calculus is focusing a lot on rates of change. So rates of change, right, is another way of saying slope. Also another way of saying how does changing one variable affect or change another variable. So we'll be looking at average rates of change and instantaneous rates of change. And we'll need to know the difference between those two and how we calculate them. Um, and then we'll also we'll use limits as we get started to go from an average rate of change to an instantaneous rate of change. So I'm going to start with a definition. So the definition is for secant. So, and this is not the trig secant, this is a different secant. So the secant to the function f of x through the points a f of a and x f of x is the line passing through these points. Now, a little bit of desensitization going on. So these are just ordered pairs. So a is the x value, f of a would be the right y partner and then an arbitrary x f of x. So the idea is that this is a particular value, so a would be a number, and x f of x just stand for any other number, any other point that's out on your graph. Okay. And so when we find the secant, and usually really we're only interested in the slope of the secant, not the equation of the secant. So we're gonna look for the slope of the secant right, between these two points that live on our curvy graph of f of x, right? So the curvy graph is f of x. And if you printed the notes in color, it looks like the curvy graph is blue. And then the secant line okay, is going through the point a, which is a given value, and its y value, and some arbitrary point further along x f of x. Okay. So the slope of that secant line Right. It's always change in f over change in x. So the change in those two x values, and I know it's down there, but go ahead and practice writing it. So right, it's the x value up top. I'm sorry, the y value up top minus the y value down here. So y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So the slope of the secant that is the average rate of change of f with respect to x. So slope of the secant equals average rate of change. Oh yeah, um, the little, the delta f, delta x. So delta in, in math, this is the delta, Greek d always means change in. Okay, so I will be using delta a lot with you guys. So delta is, right, the, the shorthand for change in. Okay, so let's practice finding slopes of secant lines. So we're gonna find the slope of the secant line for the graph below, right here, between x equals two, so that's gonna be our, our given value, our a, and some different x values. So the function that, that's pictured here is 0.5x times x minus 1 times x plus 2, or if you multiply it all out, is um, 0.5x cubed plus 0.5x squared minus x. Okay, so let's find the slope of the secant line between, so x equals 2. So I'm going to go ahead and find x equals 2 on my graph right there. And now if I go to 2.5, so hold on, let me get, let's see. One, two, three, four. So those are four. So here's one. That makes sense. And here would be three. So 2.5 would be on that place. So let me go ahead and get on my graph. So we're finding the slope between those two points. Okay. So before I find my slope, I need my y value. I guess I need um, f of two to start with. So what's f of two? I'm going to be using that a lot. And then I'll need to find these other um, y value. So let's go ahead and find f of 2. And it looks like we could read that off. It looks like it should be 4, but let's just make sure. Um, i got to move my paper so you can see my screen. So I've got 0. 0.5 times 2 times, let's see, I'm going to do some math in my head. 2 minus 1 is 1 times 2 plus 2 is 4. That looks like 4, which is what my graph said as well. So f of 2 is 4. 
Okay. And now we're going to find f of 2.5. Okay. So f of 2.5. So now I'm going to find the slope between those two points. Okay. Um, what am I going to do for that? I think I might use the strategy when I had that in my y equals screen just to get some values quickly. So 0.5x cubed plus 0.5x squared minus x. Check my window. Um, yeah, I guess that's good enough. Uh, sure. Get my graph. Get my picture. Okay, so, hope, oh, sorry. Hopefully you guys all have that picture as well. And now remember, if you want to um, find some function values, so it's here on the trace button. So I'm going to do second calc. So it's the calc um, operator if you have a, a TI calculator. And I want to find f of 2.5. So that's a value. So we're going to calculate a value. And the value is x equals 2.5. And that y value is 8.4375. 8.4375. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and let's just run through all of those since you've got um, right, you've got that punched into your, your y equals screen. So I'm going to do 2.1. So I'm just changing my x value to get its y partner. 4.7355. That y value is 1.3125. Don't worry, I'm going to, I'll scroll my screen here in just a second. I'll bring my, my piece of paper down so we can make sure these all look about right. Because right now, all I'm doing is finding the y values that go along with those particular x values. Okay. Which, right, if we had a, a, a more exact graph, we could hopefully read them off, but not with, not with those decimals. Okay. Did you guys all get those same values? Okay, so if we look at this first one, if I want to find the slope between those two points, you've got a straight edge, right? We're kind of, imagine finding this like line between those two points, and I know it's pretty steep, but we're looking for that slope. Okay, so the slope, we're going to do change in Ys. So 8.4375 minus F of 2 over the change in the X value, so 2.5. Minus 2. And remember, um, if you look up and down, the, the x and y should come from the same point. So what am I going to get there? 4.4375 divided by a half. Let my calculator do that one for me. 4.4375 divided by 0.5. So that slope is 8.4375. 875. That's the slope of the line, the secant line, between those two points. Okay, so let's do the next one. So the slope of the secant. So now I'm going to go to, here was 2.5, so 2.1, that's a whole lot closer. So that's in here somewhere, right, just below my 5, which makes sense, right, 4.7. Okay, so slope of that secant. I have to do my change in y's on top. So I take the y value for 2.1 minus the y value for 2 and then divided by right, the change in the x values. Let's see what that's going to give us. So 0.7355 divided by 0.1. Oh, you're right. I should have done that in my head. Oh, well, that's okay. Um, 7.355. Okay, well, that's pretty good. Let's let's look at 1.5 then. So now I'm going to go to the other side. So here's 1.5, 1 1.3-ish. 1 yeah, that looks okay. So now we're finding, I wish I would have used a different color for my 2. Now I'm going to use this. Here's my x equals 2. So between 1.5 and that, we're looking for that slope. Still a positive number. Right? We should kind of be in this, this ballpark. So let's go ahead and do 1.5. So I've got... Um, f of x, so 1.3125 minus f of 2, 4, divided by 
right? The x value partner, so 1.5 minus 2. Okay, so grab my calculator. Uh, let's see, that's going to be a negative 0.5 for the bottom, so I don't have to do a bunch of parentheses stuff. So that's negative, and then divide by negative 0.5. So 5.375, okie doke. And finally, 3.3345 minus 4 divided by 1.9 minus 2. So that's going to be a negative 0.1 for the denominator. What do we get for the numerator? 0.3345 minus 4. Make sure I type that in right. Yeah, it looks okay. Negative 0.6655. So altogether, I've got positive 6.655 for the slope, right, as we get closer in, right, from the, the um, left hand side. Okay, so, right, those are the average rates of change, right, for my function over a given interval of x values, right, between two and, right, arbitrarily other x values that I just chose. Notice I did say kind of in the vicinity of two, so um, that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so the definition, or the tangent to a graph at a point a, f of a, is the line, sorry, that intersects the graph only at x equals a, and by only, I mean, just like kind of in that neighborhood. So up here at 2, right, on the graph that we have, if I wanted to find the tangent line, I would be looking for the line that kind of just comes in and intersects my graph once, just there at x equals 2. So not between two points, but just touches it once right there at x equals 2. Okay, so we'd be trying to, right, come up with whatever that line is. Right, so this, in orange that I'm drawing, would be the tangent line. And we would want to somehow find that slope. So, how would we, right, how are we going to find that? And well, that's, that's what we're going to spend the next couple of weeks coming up with. So the slope of the tangent line is that instantaneous rate of change. So what would be a good guess? Do you guys have a guess for what that slope, that tangent line up there would be? I'm not sure. Maybe 0.7, right? If we think about the, the slope of the secant lines in the area, right? So what we're doing is we're kind of, if we kind of zoom in, if we, if we went even closer than 2.1, maybe if we took a value of 2.01, Right, and found that secant line, um, that would be another way that we could kind of hone in on what that tangent line would be. Okay. My guess for this is going to be, I think 0 0.7 would be a good guess. It does not have to be, right, a rational number. Um, it's okay if it's not, right? We're just, at this point, we're just guessing. Okay, so how does this work for applications? Okay. Well, for applications, a lot of the time when we talk about average rates of change, we'll, we'll talk about average costs, okay. um, or we'll talk about average velocities. And so we're going to go ahead and do velocities as our example today. So first of all, a definition. So let S of T be the position of a moving object. The average velocity of the object on the time interval starting at a and going to t, right? So t is being our independent variable now because we're talking about right, position with respect to time. So we're going to talk about the average velocity of the object over this time interval. So v average is equal to, we do the change in position, so s of t minus s of a, and then divide it by the change in time. So take a breath. This is just a manipulation, right? Distance equals rate times time. If you solve that for rate, another name for velocity, rate equals d over t. But now we're just talking about the distance. That's the change in position. So distance is change in position. 
over a given time interval. Okay, so here we go. Let's say we have a position function, um, s of t equals negative 4.9t squared plus 100t plus 40. And I have a graph, again, I hope I did it okay, um, that you guys can see here. And actually, I can tell right now that that does not look good because I should be going through the point 0, 040. Okay, so I will, um, hold on, I'm going to pause and put that on my calculator. Okay, sorry about that. So here's what the picture should look like. Um, let me show you my window. So y equals, I just punched it in. And my window, I set my x to go from 0 to 15, scaling by 1. And my y's, I went from negative 4 all the way up to 700. And then I scaled by 100. So let's look at the picture just so that we kind of have an idea. Okay, so again, I apologize that that picture isn't right. If you want to go ahead and put um, put a better picture in. Okay, so we want to look at, so let me draw a better picture in right here. So at 40, right, that's where we start, and then it goes, and we're interested right here around t equals 1. Okay, so let's find the average velocity on these intervals. So between t equals 1 and t equals 3. So what I need is I need to find the position at 3 and subtract that from the position at 1 and then divide by the change in the time. So change in position over the change in time. So what are we going to get? I mean, well, it's just some calculating, isn't it? So however you're going to do it, you can just punch it in if you'd like. 295.9 minus 135.1 over 2. So 160.8 divided by 2. So the average velocity on right the interval 1 to 3, where should I write that? I'll go over here. So um, the average slope of the secant is the average velocity is 80.4. Let's do the next one. So between 1 and 2, so again this time, s of 2 minus s of 1 divided by 2 minus 1. Okay. So go back to your graph and calculate a value. And we want the value at 2. We already have the value at 1. We don't need to do that. So 220.4 minus 135.1 divided by 1. 220.4 minus 135.1. So 85.3. Okay. So then let's look at the other side. Or out. No, we're just going to get closer and closer in towards 1. Okay, so we're just kind of... Right, we started out at 3. Put my, your picture here. We started over here at, at t equals 3, and we found that average change and then we moved into 2 and we found that average change and we're just going to kind of zoom in here to where t equals 1 right and the closer and closer we get the closer we get to that instantaneous velocity okay if you want to hit pause and try to find these average velocities right the next two on your own that'd be great okay. otherwise you can stay here with me I'm not going to write this whole thing right so uh, 1.5, so I'm going to get 178.975 minus my um, S of 1, 135.1, over 0.5 that time, 
I'm going to go ahead and grab my next value before I, so I don't have to change screens so much. So that's going to be 144.071 minus 135.1 divided by uh, 0.1. Right? Okay, so I'll move that so you guys can see my calculating screen. So I want to do 178.975 minus 135.1 divided by 0 0.5, 87.75, right, for the average velocity between 1 and 1 1.5. Um, let's see what that next one's going to do for us. Keep getting a weird glare there. Mm, how about there? Um, so that I'm dividing by 0 0.1. That's okay. I'll keep it. I uh, just need to change a couple of numbers in there. 144.071 divided by 0 0.1, 89.71. Hmm, does it look like they're headed towards any one particular value? Well, right, they certainly are. I'm just not sure I see it now. Maybe 90 would be my guess. Right, the average velocity at t equals 1 would be about 90 because they keep getting kind of bigger, but maybe it's going to go above 90. Right? I think that would be, but we tend, if we're going to guess, we tend to guess. Um, so v instantaneous, typically when we say that we mean v, um, just the plane old velocity. Um, I'm going to guess it's 90 at t equals 1. Okay, so instantaneous velocity, um, by the way, this is what you see on your, on your speedometer. Right, so if you're traveling and you look down and you see you're going 65 miles per hour, that's your instantaneous velocity. Average velocity would be, right, it takes me two and a half hours to drive to Seattle. So I would know the distance it takes to go to Seattle. I'd have the total time it takes. And if I do that division, that gives me my average velocity. Okay, so that's the difference between instantaneous and average rates of change. And remember, secant is the average rate of change. And tangent is the instantaneous rate of change.